Do you suffer from shyness? Do you sometimes wish you were more assertive? Do you wish you could read the meme as it was actually written? Ask your doctor or pharmacist about tequila. Tequila? I could use some tequila. Let's go get some now. <laughs> Woo! From Rochester, New York, the home of really weird people reading really weird things, this is FC3's Monkey Business, your one-stop shop for everything geeky. Starring myself, my name is Chris, and with me, are, as always, are my dearest and best friends, Tanya, Billy, and daniel Sun. And today, we're going to be talking to you. Yay! 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 Yeah, Who else will we be talking to? Who else will we be talking to, Chris? I know, seriously. Ben? Ben? Ben over there? Ben out there. <laughs> Where? Where? There. Oh I want God, to talk to need... the people that aren't listening. We really should. <laughs> Yeah, why aren't you listening if you're not listening? I know, seriously. <laughs> if you're not listening, raise your hand. Yeah. Raise your hand, raise your hand if you're listening. No, not listening. Hello, friends. <laughs> I raised my hand. You did? Yes. And I'm that's not. odd because you rarely ever listen to me. <laughs> 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 yeah, well. Yeah, well, you know. That's amazing. Yeah. A show of hands always works well on, a, on an audio podcast. Exactly. It's really no kidding. Radio play. Uh, yeah, it was funny. I got the inspiration for that opening today because as I'm opening up Facebook, so we have the list of things we're going to talk about in the long segment, I see you have memories and that meme was the memory, right? So I click on see more memories and now I'm scrolling down. It's probably my age that tricks people into thinking I'm an adult. Yeah. You know? The age is just a number, you know? Yeah, it, is. It, it is. That number keeps getting bigger. Make it stop. <laughs> All right, anyway. So, how are you all today? Fabulous. Fabulous at all. Doing good. We should have, I, I don't know if you, uh, I'll start off with a little story. Right now, we mm -hmm. should have a sixth cat in our house, but we don't. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, we were going to foster one that uh, Susan saw on Facebook that needed someone to take care of it for a couple weeks until it could get to its new home. But it mm -hmm. turns out that the cat we were going to foster already had a home, uh, oh. and it was a lost kitty. And Aww. the Aww. person that uh, – I, I guess the person posted online like a couple weeks ago when the cat was lost, and somehow uh, yesterday's post, uh, looking for a foster, uh, put up Got some it. radar or something. <clears throat> hey, that's that missing cat. So hopefully we reunited – the kitty and its owner. Well, that works too because you know yeah. that the system works then that that way, and, yep. then, and, and little sucker found its way home again. That's awesome. I'll say, speaking of new kitties, uh huh. I, I don't have one, but okay. oh. um, <laughs> I would love, love, love to take the little gray fluff ball that um, Ann and Jess rescued from the barn at the farm. Mm -hmm. And they are now bottle feeding, and it's living in a box in their living room. Living um, in a box? Living in a cardboard box? Yeah, well, it's in a box to kind of acclimate it to the mm -hmm. other five cats yeah. in the house, or however many cats. Let's see. Boomer, Ravioli. 373 cats. I think there's four <laughs> cats in the house. Um, but, oh my god, it's, it fits in the palm of your hand, and mm -hmm. it's like... It is mm. so cute. So, little <laughs> little gray fluff ball. Type. So might you might you be having a cat soon? Uh, <laughs> no, I. Go, Wade's like, oh, you touched it. You got to take it home. I'm like, if I take <laughs> if I take it home, I have to move out. Yeah, and, <laughs> <It's yours. laughs> yeah. That, that's the only thing is because I'm not allowed to bring any more animals into the house other than mm -hmm. my two kids. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They've they've been there, so you kind of they're, they're yeah, they've, they've, been, they've been here for uh, twenty one to twelve years. So <laughs> yeah, so they're, uh -huh. they're, 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 into the they're, they're kind of trained to yeah. a, to an ex, to a certain extent. Yeah, I was gonna say. No, oh my god! And like one of Justice's friends already has a gray kitty by the mm -hmm. name of Piper, and I'm like, oh, this one needs to go home and be a Phoebe or a Paige. <laughs> oh no! And she's it's like, oh, the well kitties. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, oh my god. So I don't know if she gets to take it home or not because her mm -hmm. mom's like, no. <laughs> so, yes, but they were so cute. But I digress, like usual. 
Well, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of what the opening is all about. Actually, I think that's mostly what the long, no, especially what the podcast is about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Digre- digressions. Side quests and digressions. Digre- oh. Did we do well, a song about that? People still listen to us, so hey, we're doing something right. <laughs> you know? The dig- oh. digression podcast? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> digressions, oh. a new scent from the Mighty Monkey Company. Well, Christopher, I saw that you uh, finished your International Space Station. I did. Somebody Ooh. was very kind and bought me the ISS Lego set for Ooh. my birthday, an early birthday present from I my wanted that. And and I have it now. Just and the store. Th- there was there was yeah because Tanya and I were hanging out and we went to the we ended up going to the mall and we were walking around. We wandered into the Lego store. Mm. And, I wanted to go to the box a, lunch store. That's a dangerous this, place. This girl, I tell you, mm. you, I'm shaking my fist at you right now, Tanya. Um, yep. You know we were. She goes. So if you had to choose between this set or that set, which one would you go? And I'm like, well, I'd probably was... go with this one because this is cooler. And, and and then she just pulls it off the shelf and starts walking to the register. She goes, early birthday present. I'm like, I'm gonna hurry. Oh, you. oh that's awesome. <laughs> Well, it was either that or the Avengers Helicarrier. Yes, mm. which was just as cool, but um, yeah, but it was so a little more expensive. Stuff. So even though did there was like a Nintendo large Lego set, that was broke up there did, a little bit, Danny. Did Did you see the Did they have the Nintendo Lego set? No, I didn't see that one. A Lego set that looks like a Nintendo system. The old wow. one. No, but <laughs> they oh, I saw that. okay. I saw that article online. Somebody had done that. They oh. had um a Lego set. Well, it. I wouldn't say set, but um, you do a picture of um, Iron Man mm-hmm. using the little circular chits <laughs> and all the guy, cause the one guy was putting it together um, at the Lego store mm-hmm. and you do it in um, like square blocks. So they take a square block and you build each of the square blocks and then you put it all together to, and they have another one that's um, I think Darth Vader. I saw, where was I? I saw uh, Target, maybe? Yeah, I think I was at, when I was at Target on Friday, they had like a, a Star Wars one where it makes a picture instead of um, like an actual set set. Mm-hmm. It was kind of cool. But hmm. I wouldn't want to try to put all those little circular things in. Because those things are hard to manage. So anyway, so let's see. I started, I kind of came up with the idea of just because the box has been sitting in my room and I just went, it, it was one of those victims of when I had time, I wasn't thinking about it. And when I was thinking about it, I didn't have time. You know how that works. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but the other night I just, I sat down and I'm like, I'm doing this. I'm setting it up. So I started setting up my, uh, my desk, clearing it off a bit here in the office and, and I hunkered in and I started putting it together one bag at a time. It's cool. They kind of feed you through it. It's not as, it's, as they, 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 it's really down to a system now. It is really... down to a system. I remember like ba- way back in the day when I first got the galaxy Explorer as a kid and I was oh, so thick, cause that was the, the ultimate thing. Mm-hmm. And then you just dump all the pieces out and you're certain surf through them and whatnot. You're looking yep. for what you needed. But this with, with a a plastic, t- plastic trays in the tray in the box to kind of, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 So now I've got this, you know, it was down to a system and, and I, I was trucking right along and there was a time where I stopped building it, um, you know, for a little bit and, and, and then, then I came back to it. So I think overall it took me about four and a half hours of actual building time. And I know it was four and a half hours cause I had, um, Amazon prime up and I was watching episodes of, of doctor who on it. <laughs> so I was timing it out to episodes of doctor who and I think I got like five of them in. So. Nice. So it's a double duty there. That's nice. Yeah, I'm telling you. Well, it's Good great stuff. background noise. Mm-hmm. So, and I don't care what people say. Jodie Whittaker's a great doctor. So there you have it. I said it. I think she's doing good. I think, yeah, she's I think doing the writing. Could be, I think the, they could be doing the episodes different. I think she's doing good as a doctor, but I think they need mm-hmm. to do the writing could be a little bit better. Yeah, she is a victim of writing at the moment. But they've had mm-hmm. some. They've had some really good episodes as of late. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking that. The unfortunate thing is she's probably going to hit her stride and then, you know, and then step down from the part. Right? <laughs> so it's like, That's a good and bad Doctor Who there, you know, it's like. It's, yeah. <laughs> anyway. But the show goes on, which is great, so. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> Billy, Billy. Yes, sir. How are I'm you? Here. Doing good. I'm doing good on eventful. I spent the last couple of days bagging and boarding comic books. And, nice. my, and whenever I do that, I go through my. Just sort of, uh, what does it, is new Teen Titans go under end for new? <laughs> I or saw that. Or, and, and it's serious. I move them back and forth. And does, 
uh, <laughs> Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen go on to rest for Superman, J for Jimmy. I I literally it it wrecks my brain trying to figure that stuff out. <laughs> well, give you something you know to what? do though. You know, Where here's is... the thing. I've been in the same position, mm -hmm. right, with New Mutants and or the the New Avengers, Young Avengers, things like that. This is the system I've used. I will share it with you, and you may choose to use it as you see fit. You've probably had this rationale in the past. Um, for instance, with Avengers, I've kept it all in an Avengers setup. And then so like, oh, the new Avengers. OK, I put that behind Avengers and then I put a little tab in the box. So, you, OK, there's the new Avengers are there. But I try to keep them all together. So Ultimate Spider-Man, you know, uh, Amazing Spider-Man, they're all in the Spider-Man box. That's you know, the other one. Amazing Spider-Man so far is under A, whereas Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man could go under P for mm -hmm. Peter Parker. S mm -hmm. for Spectacular Spider-Man or S for Spider-Man. And right now, it's, I think it's currently under P. I haven't had any new issues to try and mm -hmm. figure out where they go yet. So, um, But it, it wrecks, it's both fun and unbelievably aggravating for me. It's part <laughs> relaxing and part make, makes me want to pull my hair out. Right. You know, just the whole bagging and boarding and looking at the comic and the cover and, oh, that's cool. I got to remember. And But then just the the alphabet alphabetizing of them can oh that i it, it drives me crazy sometimes mm -hmm. so that's I think what each I get person has days. their own system yeah so. but i keep changing mine yeah that's the problem <laughs> or i'm having. not sure like i i get indecisive about it like i i, <laughs> I posted my question on facebook yeah and people like wayne he's very specific uh jimmy olsen goes under j lois lane goes under l New Teen Titans go under T. Uh, none of the Superman's pal, Superman's girlfriend. It's just the character. Okay, mm -hmm. where does the mighty Thor go under? Is it M Thor. or is it T for Thor? That's where I think so I wound up. It, so the thing is, it's like if you do it per character. But you, then you... but then instead of Mighty Thor, that doesn't stop me from putting Amazing Spider-Man and Spectacular Spider-Man in under different letters. And then I should I combine them? Should I? Well, oh. then if you have a Spider-Man box, then as as Chris says, yeah. uh -huh. you have the the set of yeah. Amazing Spider-Man, and then behind it, alphabetize it that way. Then, but, but until tab. this time, I, I didn't have that problem. I just, Amazing Spider-Man went under A, and mm -hmm. I used the Overstreet Guide as a reference for those. Uh -huh. But I'm not sure what to do with my Teen Titans comics yet. So. Well, friends out there, works. if you have suggestions for Billy, please let us know so that we can pass those along and uh, and help him alleviate some of the stress of collecting. So that's what I did for a couple of days. I bought bags and boards and, and a couple more comics. Nice. So, so, so how many comics did you bag and board? Uh, I probably had, I had about a hundred that weren't that's bagged nice. and boarded yet. Nice. So I did that. Yeah, a good thing to do. Good. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Protect your investment, man. Seriously. Mm -hmm. You never know which one's going to take off. Mm -hmm. Just, I like to keep them nice and like to know where they are. That's why the alphabetizing right. drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I know where they are. Then you know where they are. Yeah. Uh, At least I have options. Okay, did I put Jimmy Olsen or J or S this time? So. Not sure. There we go. I can't tell you this time. I didn't see it. Yeah. So far, but those, that's, that's the great debate now. That's yeah. it's where how do you how do you sort out your your comic book collection? We need to get like one of the the comic book shop guys in. You know, we'll get like Mike from Thirteenth First or mm -hmm. somebody to come you know to come join us for a, a, a time. We can ask him the the hard hitting questions. How do you organize your collection? Yeah. Well, how's it organized in the store? Yeah, uh, like I said, I was at Rhino's yesterday, and mm -hmm. he has the. Jimmy Olsen comics under S for Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, which is mm -hmm. the official title. Or as I still just have them under J. Oh. Jimmy Olsen. So, but I know that for now until I decide to move them to S. I think Overstreet has them under S. That's it. Call chat. We're getting him in. <laughs> yeah, uh, like... We're gonna get him in. We're gonna get him in, and we're gonna we're gonna have a little sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, help How, us out. How do we do this? What's the best way to organize your comics? <laughs> That's awesome. To me, anything can be organized anyway, as long as you know where it is. Mm -hmm. So, 
Maybe I should put him under O for Olson. That's how the phone book would have it. Now mm-hmm. you're just being silly now. Who, me? <laughs> Organized like the phone book. Come on. <laughs> well, what's a phone book? <laughs> it's a thing that I would have needed to sit on at Chris's house if he hadn't given me his chair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had a little disparity of chairs there, apparently. <laughs> if I sit in Juliana's chair for Nerd World News, I'm too short. <laughs> But we so, switch. Yep. Uh, so I sit in Chris's chair, which has got a lot more padding, so I'm up higher. So Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about you, Daniel Son? You're going on a trip soon. I am. Uh, I'm going get up from it, too. So, you know, I hate tripping and falling. But. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, sorry. It wouldn't Maybe be a not. podcast without a Dan joke. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> It's amazing to me that there's been an evolution. I mean, over the years, it's always been a Dan joke, but now I realize that he actually fits into a much larger category of the dad joke. Oh, uh, yeah. So I just right? started, I guess. So. Yes, they started off as, as humble little Dan jokes, but they've evolved now into dad jokes. So. Mm-hmm. Where, are you, where are you off to? Thousand Islands. And I count every single one of them. Nice. <laughs> you got to let me know if it's accurate. Ones. I was told once that it was actually like 1006. I don't know. I actually I don't know. Somebody was also saying it was only four hundred, but you know, what do I know? How many islands <laughs> are <laughs> in the How thousand islands? How many islands can a river uh, flood down? Let's see. How many islands are in the thousand islands? Let's see. Six. <laughs> Eighteen hundred and sixty-four. A couple thousand islands. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're talking about. Oh, well, the little land masses that don't necessarily have names. Well, it's got, it's, now, is Thousand Islands, is that the home of the Thousand Islands dressing? Is that where like it was created was in that neck of the woods? I don't know. Oh. All of human understanding at our fingertips, and these are the questions we ask. Wow. <laughs> Thousand Island dressing, let's see. According to Oxford, uh, the name for Thousand Island dressing presumably comes from the Thousand Islands between the United States and Canada and the St. Lawrence River. However, several different versions of the dressing's origins exist. One common story describes how a fishing guide's wife, Sophia Lalonde, made the condiment as part of her husband George's shore dinner. Often in this version, actress May Irwin requested the recipe after enjoying it. Irwin gave it, in turn, gave it to another Thousand Islands summer resident, George Bolt, who built Bolt Castle between 1900 and 1904. Okay. Bolt, as proprietor of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, instructed the hotel's maitre d', Oscar. I can't say the last name, to put the dressing on the it's menu Smith. in 1894. It's a Sersky. It's a so it might be between the... It looks like it could be from the Thousand Islands. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It says, did you see, a story goes in the early 20th century of fishing guide's wife, Sophie Lalonde. You said that? Uh, yes, Sophie Lalonde, yes. Made the condiment for her husband's shore dinner. Yes. Okay. That's what I just read, yes. It, it, yeah. She was doing research, so she didn't hear what you were saying half the time. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Answering questions is kind of a fun thing that we do, you know, and the, the whole get to know you questions, which is kind of the cool. It's the basis yeah. for our, our main section today. So we're going to go to a quick break. Mm-hmm. And when we come back, um, our buddy James Irish posted a great meme. And I think what we're going to do is I think we should just power through and answer as many of those as we can in like, you know, 45 minutes or so like that. See what happens. Just just get like, you know, some discussion topics. Also, I will admit certain discussions that we've been on lately have inspired me to create podcast topics for down the road. It has helped me make my job easier. I'm not ashamed. So (laughs) that's good. That's That's what we want. There we go. So so here we are. We're going to the, the topic of today's discussion is basically discussing. James Irish's recently posted meme of geek questions because we love that sort of thing. What's Next your on, geek after persona? the break. What's your geek persona? All right, after the break. So we're, we're going to take a quick moment and we'll be right back. back ladies and gentlemen boys and girls dudes and dudettes what's your geek persona 
our buddy James Irish posted a meme the other day on Facebook and we all got a kick out of it. And we're like, hey, let's make a podcast topic out of it. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to just go through the list as many as we can probably muster in a, in a 45 minute to an hour span of time. And uh, we're going to we're going to probably laugh and cry and, and pick on each other a little bit. But we're going to go through the list. And along the way, if you yourself have an answer, I want you to go back to our, our Facebook feed or our Twitter feed, wherever how you uh, listen to our podcast or get the link for it and add your answers to those particular questions. For instance, number one, I don't have much in terms of, of input on, uh, but the number one is what's your favorite Pokemon? Dan, what's your favorite Pokemon? I never watched the show. So. Thank you. Okay, same here. Um, I'm going to assume it's, what's that little yellow fellow that everybody talks Pikachu. about? Pikachu. Okay, so I, I guess that's going to be my default. I did, I did see Inspector Pikachu with Ryan Reynolds voicing the character. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, Detective and, and it was Pikachu? A very, it was a very cute movie. It, it was, was, it, was cute. it was painfully silly at times, but you were to expect that. Um, but Billy, do you do you even have an answer? No, for that? I I don't. I know it was a game and mm -hmm. a, a movie and the TV show, but Pikachu is the only one I have the. I know there was a kid that I used to work with uh, when I worked in a, a factory that during every break would play the the game on his. Uh, uh, oh, Boy. Pokemon Go? Yeah. Or like a Game Boy version or something. It was his mm -hmm. thing, but I don't know anything about Pokemon. <laughs> so it's not a good question for us. Okay. No, no, moving, that's a, that's <laughs> moving right along. I mean, I played Pokemon <laughs> Go for a little while, question. but it just didn't fit when. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. oh. So moving right along, I think, is one that we can all actually start diving in on right now. Number two is, and I'm going to put this at Dan right now. Dan, you're the first off on this one. Who is your spirit Muppet? I'm going to have to go with Kermit. There you go. I mean, it's just, there's just no doubt. I don't know. You even have his pained expression when something goes hysterically <laughs> wrong. Yes. Yeah, so Dan is our straight man protagonist. So. He really is. <laughs> yeah. I know. Dan's also, Dan is also, I mean, I've, Dan and I have been, best friends since we were like 14, 15 years old. So we've been together for a, a number of years, long yeah. time. Yeah. Right. And um, like, I can't remember my life without Dan. That's how close he and I are. We were brothers. Mm -hmm. And there was I, no life before. Us. There was, I can't remember. <laughs> I don't recall. <laughs> then there was this flash of light and suddenly there was a Dan anyway. Um, oh, but in all of our adventures, Danny has been that kind of like that, that steady presence in the middle. That's just like, okay, you're going way too far on that. Oh, no, that's fun. Let's do that, right? <laughs> you know, so, it, but but holding it kind of holding it slowly together, little by little, the heart and soul of the operations, as it were. And and then there's me, who's uh, my spirit animals. It, it varies back and forth. I always like to fashion myself as animal, but I'm probably more like Fozzie, who okay. thinks he's really funny, but more often than not, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> but we're moving right along either way. Exactly. <laughs> I love that song. Bear right. <laughs> left, left frog. <laughs> no, no, it's it's bare left, right frog. I got that one. Yeah. Okay, turn left at the fork in the road. Turn, turn left. I can't believe that. <laughs> a bear in his natural habitat. A, a baker. baker. <laughs> Tanya, how about you? Who's your spirit Muppet? Um, I was looking at them like going ones that would be, like be close to like my personality and things like that, uh -huh. and, and my antis and. It, it's a lesser known or one that doesn't come out. I would have to go with Janice. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh there you go. Yeah, uh, I would not define you as a Miss Piggy. You're, you're not. No, that much no. Of a no. And it says I'm like looking just because I was searching the different Muppets because I'm like, okay, no, nope, I'm not a Fozzie. No, nope, I'm not Animal. No, nope, I'm not Beaker. No, nope, I'm not like, I could go me, 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 me. Not but, Dr. And, Teeth. <laughs> no. And it says in personality, Janice is generally laid back. I would say. Generally, I'm laid back, but I've got a lot of, like, short, sweet, to the point, whatever. But noted for her Valley Girl, for sure, in Raleigh dialogue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, oh, my God. <laughs> so, but I'm just like, yeah, I think this would probably be, like, the closest one. But I don't think I'd be able to play lead guitar. I could um, play tambourine. I, I could do tambourine. That's about <laughs> for it. For sure, really. <laughs> Wasn't Janice the bass player? I thought Janice was the bass player. No. no, she was the lead guitar player. Well, then what was Floyd? Is Floyd the bass? 
I, I don't know. I think so. Because Zoot, Zoot's Pepper. saxophone. Yeah. Okay, remember Floyd, that. let's see. Floyd is the bass player. Yep. Okay. All right, so Janice is a guitar. Okay. That's cool. It's even better, in my opinion. I love so. it. The electric, I the electric air guitar. band is like my favorite band of all time, I got to tell you. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and see that would that would um that would be like a thing. I, w- I would expect Billy. I'm I'm going to predict your answer somewhere in that band. No, it, it's I thought about it, uh-huh. but um really, I, and I don't know if we're counting the Sesame Street Muppets as Muppets. They're Muppets. Or, uh, yeah. Oscar the Grouch. I mean, my sister okay. <laughs> or Oscar the Grouch pajama pants, <clears throat> or if we're going TV show Muppets, <clears throat> Muppet show Muppets. Stadler and Waldorf, because I always try and have some type of sarcastic comment about whoever <laughs> I'm okay. watching. So, so those are my... that's awesome. That's awesome. I'll take it. I, I thought about band members, but then I saw Stadler. No, I'm Stadler and Waldorf. In yeah. fact, I still remember uh, a few years ago, me and a buddy of mine went to an independent wrestling show. It was at the German House down on Gregory Street. Mm-hmm. And there was a bunch of people on the floor. And me and my buddy were up in the balcony by ourselves. There was a picture of us. Oh. <laughs> we looked like Stadler and Waldorf up there. Just mocking That's the people. That's phenomenal. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so that's my choice. That's phenomenal. I freaking love that. All right. Moving right along. Occupation. that <laughs> says Stadler and Waldorf. Their occupation hecklers. Hecklers. <laughs> It's, it's their job. It's their um, career. The spouse of Waldorf is Astoria. Stat- of course. It's now his ex-wife. Statler, yeah. it says unknown, although he has a wife. So uh, it, it doesn't say what his wife's name is, though. Hmm. That's funny. <clears throat> Which one is Statler and Waldorf? <laughs> hey, Tanya. Hey, what? Question number three is, what's your Star Trek rank? Uh, um... I would have to go counselor. <laughs> what well, is counselor lieutenant? is a job title. I'm talking like rank. Uh, lieutenant commander. Okay. Yeah. Department head. I loved uh-huh. I loved lieutenant commander when I was playing the Star Trek online games because you had tons of tons of authority but no responsibility because all everything would go past you to the commanders and captains but you could like command small divisions of everybody it was great it was so yeah. much fun to play that that I, rank because i think that when uh, we first started fc3 we kind of did you had kind of like ranks right we, we at least had talked about it yeah we had talked, we had talked about it and it's always been my goal to to have to to have us on. wearing rank pips and stuff like that yeah. i just i've never gotten around <clears> to actually make it happen I'm always thinking mm-hmm. about something else. Hey, I did for one of our cosplay karaoke nights. I do have. Yes, you a did. Set you, of you did a whole a, um, Deanna next Troy. generation movie uniform, Deanna Troy, and I yeah. thought you mm-hmm. did great. You looked great. In yeah, it. you did good. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Ariel, for uh, making the jacket. Oh, she for did me. a fantastic job on that mm-hmm. jacket. Yep. I have to make mm-hmm. have her make me one one of these days. Yeah. Well, she's in New York City now, so uh, we'll have to see how that works. But yeah, so I would say Lieutenant Commander. Okay. Dan, you don't have a saying that you're an admiral. Deal with it. Okay. <laughs> well, I thought he was captain initially. Well, he was, but then when we started have branching out, and it was more than just because we have Brian, quote unquote, in the in the in the chain of command of things, runs the the convention, and then I have the entertainment division. So that's podcasting and and comic chicks and all that stuff, right? So there's departments. So it's basically different ships. Right, so an admiral handles different, you know, like a, a small cadre of ships. A fleet, a fleet, a fleet yeah. yeah. He's got a fleet. I'm a fleet, I'm a fleet admiral. We have a we have a small we have a small fleet that we're starting to build, <laughs> and over the next few years, we're going to build it into a massive battle fleet of entertainment fun. Anyway, um, Whoa. yeah, I know. Seriously, <laughs> write that down. A battle fleet of entertainment fun. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sometimes I come up with stuff, and I'm like, "Why did you just say that?" <laughs> I like it, but Dan likes it. There you go. Um, so Dan doesn't get a say. He's so just... Dan doesn't get a say. Uh, so Billy, how, what would you? How would you, what would your I'm start? Just gonna, rank I'm just going to go ensign. Tell, just okay. tell me what to do, and I'll go do it. <laughs> I don't want to be a boss. Just you know, go do it. Okay. You just want to be part of the fun, right? That, that's sort of how I am in real life. Go do that. Go. Okay. But Happy Billy to be a part that, of things. Billy said that he would love to live on a starship and, and things like that, and travel right. in space and never leave it. Yeah. Exactly. He said that on numerous occasions. Yes, He's I the have. Enterprise's first Boo Radley. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just hides uh, and does his thing. Yeah. 
Leave me alone. Everything will be fine. And I guess that kind of means that I would be captain. Yeah. I have I have my own department, and I so it's my ship, which is almost like yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I I on my on my F, my mighty monkey jacket. Right, I've been starting to add pins and stuff. I want this thing to become like an artifact in its own right. And on the on the collar on the right side, I have the three FC three 2016 enamel pins you had bought for our inaugural mm-hmm. show. So, yep. like, yes, he's got commander rank showing. So, I guess I got to get a fourth one now, so I can there put, you, go. you know put another one on. <laughs> or, or we need to look on Amazon or whatever for the. Uh, it wasn't Amazon. I think it was. I got my uh, pips on uh, eBay. Oh, I call Terry over at Arlene's and, and we can get that all sorted out in, in a phone call. So I just got to yeah. remember to do that one of these days when it's like actually like relevant. So, but Terry can take that taken care of uh, quickly for me easily. All right. Number four, this is going straight to Billy because he is the big DC fan. What is your favorite? Who is your favorite DC villain? I'm going to go comics because they haven't <clears> nailed them. <throat> Although in the movies, uh, Black Manta and Aquaman, Black Manta and and Ocean Master and Aquaman in the movies. Uh, but Two-Face, for some reason, in the mm. Batman comics, I've, anytime Two-Face is the villain, that's my favorite. So I'm going to go Two-Face. He, Harvey Dent has a, sort of a moral compass. It's the flip of the coin. Will he do bad? And if it comes heads up clean, you don't get killed. The bank doesn't get robbed, whatever. So there's... He's like, darn it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I've always liked Two-Face. Okay. That's cool. Um, How about you, Daniel-san? I'd probably guess Lex Luthor. I guess. I'd probably say Lex Luthor. I don't think guess because it's my thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I'm I'm putting it the way you're putting it right now. By the way, (laughs) by describing it the way you're describing right now is like you really haven't given it much thought. You're you're just kind of like going off the top of your head right now. So you're guessing, but it's your first your first instinct is to say Lex Luthor. Well, I've been watching Supergirl, and they and they have the Lex Luthor um, character in Supergirl, and I kind of liked what they've done with him, and it's just kind of it's just been so it's stuck out in my head a lot lately. So. Not Again, lately, but Supergirl. Unfortunately, she's one of those CW shows that I just I fell away from and haven't gone back to take yeah. a look at again. Yeah. And, that's, and that's not. I don't want to. I, every time I mention that, I'm there's like, I don't want to talk about many the shows. There's just no, too many to keep up. There's with. too many shows. Yeah, and that's I, the thing. you can choose what you want and everything. So they're it's, all so like, good. I've enjoyed. I hear all Star of them. Girl is fantastic, and I haven't had a chance yeah. to watch it. I watched it's the moved, first episode it? of it. That's it's moved it, from it, CW. No, it's still there. So there. Yeah. Oh, is it? I thought I just I just watched the thirteenth episode of it. The I think the last of the I don't know if it's a whole season or whatever, but yeah, I thought I thought they did a. I mean, I don't know the comics, for, uh, whatever, but I thought they did a good job with the show. I, I like the the cast, the characters, and everything. So it's, mm-hmm. it's been enjoyable. Good, 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 good to know. Very cool. Um, Tanya, Christopher, did you have a favorite DC villain? Mm, uh... If I was going uh, movies, I'd have to uh, go with Dan with uh, mm-hmm. Lex Luthor. Um, mm-hmm. If I uh, old school movies, um, new school movies, I have to go um, Harley Quinn. Oh, good one. Okay, I, I'm I'm love I love Margot Robbie's portrayal. Of her. Well, yeah, I think that's it's become iconic very quickly. As soon as she yeah. had the screen. In Suicide Squad, everybody's like, "Okay, you need to base the entire universe around her now." Yeah, <laughs> so. Birds of Even Prey like is watching... really underrated. Birds yes, of it Prey was is a really good movie. I, I, I did enjoy that movie. It was a lot of fun. Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I liked um, Poison Ivy in the movies. I liked what was it uh, uh, Catwoman? Whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. but... But yeah, I'm I'm leaning more towards uh, Harley. Very cool. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna have to throw my vote in for Joker. Okay. That was the other one that was kicking around. And and if I had to pick one specifically, it would be Heath Ledger's Joker in the movies. Although, mm. um, to 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 bypass Mark Hamill's voice acting in the animated series would just be a crime. Right, because yeah. it was just he. It, it, that is the definition of iconic when it comes to the superhero genre. 
And, and you know, so those are my two favorite renditions of it because the, I mean, I, I get that he's supposed to be a foil, give Batman something to do, but it's, he's always evolved in such an amazing agent of chaos. You know, and that's, I think it was Heath Ledger's Joker was particularly definitive in that regard. He was just an agent of chaos. He didn't have a plan. He didn't have a goal. He didn't have an overall, you know, I want to take over the world or I just want, he just didn't know what was going to happen next and enjoyed himself in the process. And I think there was just something so, so amazing about that to watch in action. And I just, if, if anything, there are several reasons why I wish Heath Ledger were still alive today, but one of them would be to see him play that character continuing in other movies. Um, you know, just he was just such a great actor. The kid was just fearless. He would throw himself into the part without any regard for what was going on. You just you just go, and and that's a quality that very few people have. You know, I mean, we can learn a lot that just throw you, how you throw yourself into life. It's just the way you do it. So yeah, that's that's the one I'm going to talk about. Um, moving on. Question number five. Hey, uh, hey, Billy. Yes, sir. What would be your force alignment if you were in the Star Wars universe? My force you... alignment. I don't mm -hmm. think I understand the question. I mean, okay, good versus I can explain. Evil, There's yep, good versus evil, and then law versus uh, chaos. Yeah, well, I'm, 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 I'm looking at this way. Would you be a Jedi? Would you be a Sith? Or would you be somewhere in the middle? I'd be somewhere in the middle. I think mm -hmm. he'd be a force no, Adam. Like Han Solo was not, or am I reading that wrong? Like, what was Han Solo? Was he in the Force, or well, he didn't have considered a middle guy, or he was more of a regular dude, right? Yeah, so I'm talking like, a... like, would you be Obi Wan? Would you be Darth Maul? Would you be Qui Gon Jinn? Would you be Ahsoka Tano? Would oh, you be, okay, so you um, yeah, I, I'm somewhere in the middle again. I, I, I don't. I'm a good guy, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I I don't want to be, you know, part of the dark side. So right, I'm on. But I'm you're on not like all the way in on crusading and being a part of things and going out and fighting and balancing no. things out and whatnot. Gotcha. No, I don't think so. You know, it's I know me. <laughs> yeah, and lower down on the list, mm -hmm. there is uh, in question twenty one, and so we'll we'll mesh these two together. Mm -hmm. Um, there's an alignment question. It's a D and D reference law, good chaos, evil, neutrality, stuff like that. So Billy, I see you kind of like right in the middle, kind of like almost like a neutral, good I, kind of yeah. a character. Yes. Right. Yeah. You, I you, mean, there are you know, times where, uh, maybe the, the law needs to be bent a little. I yeah, think. exactly. Exactly. But, um, I, I'm, I'm, I consider myself a good person, but can see how that, uh, things need so, sometimes need to be kind of changed up or, yeah. or ignored yes. to, to make the right thing happen. So that's my thought on that. It Not works. a very eloquent one, but that's my thought. You know, you don't need to. All right. How about you there, Tanya? Um, for Salima, I've gone, well, I've played, uh, um, Particularly uh, force adups and Jedi's and things like that. So, mm -hmm. in regard, if I if, I, if looking at force, it's more of like the the definite good in law. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> D and D alignment in regards to I, I've got run the gamut in regards to uh, alignment Which played, but yeah played. But my personal alignment, I want to say I'm neutral, good, tending mm -hmm. more towards the law, mm -hmm. but um. Some laws can be um, problematic. That and um, interpreted to and, and bent to my will. Gotcha. Yeah. In or the t I mean, because remember, I was going to be a lawyer. So yeah, I, I remember. No. Was, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think I'm definitely not necessarily chaotic. Mm -hmm. Um, because, and I, and I'm not evil. I can be evil at times. Um, no, you can't. <laughs> oh, it depends on what it is. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely neutral of leaning more towards the law, lawful. And that's, I think where I have such a hard time playing like opposite my align, my like general outlook in mm -hmm. campaigns. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Whereas we have other people that can like, bring it on type thing and uh, just love the chaos. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Daniel? You, you Hunter. So. <laughs> <laughs> Chaotic Wexler. 
I, I'd be more on the Jedi side. I mean, yeah. obviously, I think. Yeah, you but... and me both. You and me both. <coughs> I've always seen you as more like, um, not like full on lawful good. If we continue on with the alignment question, but definitely a, a neutral, heavy lawful good. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm I'm definitely chaotic good. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. I have to embrace that. You know? You're like, ah, who needs laws? Well, the funny thing is, is I've taken plenty of those quizzes over the years, and they all tell me I'm neutral good. And I, I'm like, okay, I can get behind that. But then there are times where it's just like, no, I'm just a chaotic mess. So. Well, yeah, you're a chaotic mess, but... Yeah. yeah. It depends I what would, the laws are. I would, be, here, I would probably be the... If I were in the Star Wars universe, I would be that complicated guy who was a Jedi, trained as a Jedi, understands all the, you know, the reasons that you are a Jedi. But every so often would like... But but doing that would be very expedient, evil but expedient. You know. So, so the initial Anakin. Yeah, I'm guilty of cutting corners. I admit it. I I do that, and and it, and it blows up in my face sometimes, and it doesn't sometimes, and then I pat myself on the back for getting away with shit. You know. <laughs> You know, and and I so I just have to embrace that part of me. So yeah, like I'd, I'd say, well, you know, I I don't know if I'd liken myself to Anakin because I'm not that whiny. But... <laughs> Especially the young Anakin there. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I wanted to... I mean, now, if it was the Anakin being represented in the Clone Wars animated series, then I could probably do that a little bit better. But the, the movie oh, Anakin... I'm, I, mm. I, I'm yeah, not no. going to blame Hayden Christensen because he was given uh, uh, you know, a big pile of garbage and here talk about this. Poor, it was a poor role, yeah. It was a poor role. Poor writing. So it's not the actor's fault, but yeah, I would go with the... If you're going to line me up, I'd say line me up with the uh, the animated version of Anakin. That would be a that would be a wild ride. Yeah, you know, give me force powers and a lightsaber, and I can guarantee you something naughty will probably happen somewhere along the line. <laughs> naughty, <laughs> naughty. Oh, that was very naughty. But, uh, oh, all right. What's next? What's next? Sonic, Sonic or Mario? Or Mario. Sonic yes. Or Mario. Oh, the the computer the video games. Sonic or Mario? Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't know. I don't really. I never liked either of them, to be honest. It was some, played, if it was on, I'd play it. But that, it was never something I went I've, out of my I've way to look for. I played both. It. So mm-hmm. I mean, in, in our house, we have both Sonic and Mario. Like uh, Tyler and uh, Tyler has like a little tails figure from mm-hmm. Sonic, and Riker's got some stuff from Mario, and I think he has something from Sonic. So it, it's a it's a both in our house and. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, one's Nintendo and one's Sega. I think Sega. Maybe Sega. <laughs> um, but uh, it's like, why do you have? It's like the Star Wars, Star Trek, which one's better type thing. It's like, why can't you like both? So okay. number six, I'm going to say both. It's okay. not going to be an or. It's an and. Okay. Because we have the- both games in the house. Yeah, I, I I had the original like Nintendo system and the original Sega PlayStation or Sega whatever it was called, and I had both those games. But I always preferred Mario in terms of games. So I haven't seen the movie for either. So based on the game, I'm going Mario. You haven't you haven't seen the uh, Super Mario Brothers movie? No, and no uh, interest. That's cheesy too. Uh, okay, Christopher. Sonic or Mario? I'm not going to choose, really, because, like I said, I, I I never really. I mean, if if somebody was playing them and said gave me the controls to here take a round, I'd I'd jump in and you know probably yell a lot like I was trying to figure things out. But I never went out of my way to play either of those games. I know they're they're both they've both become these great animated things. You know, movies have been made about them that were decently and mildly entertaining. But I just don't have a preference when it comes to either of those. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, I don't either. I don't have, really have a preference. Doesn't. Yeah. If I had to choose one, I'd, I'd probably pick Mario. But I never really. Mm-hmm. I think because that was like the the like classic one that came first. Yeah. And because I can remember my cousin Johnny playing um the Who's Johnny uh, she said <laughs> uh, playing the the uh, Stephanie, nice Super Mario there. Brothers or uh, <laughs> Super Mario One or whatever and. Uh, just fascinated because he could get through, I think, almost the whole game on one Mario. So, wow, yeah. I mean, I, I understand that it takes certain hand eye coordination that I know I don't have. Yeah. So. And, and I, I think I, I prefer, like, the when we go to number 16, Xbox or PlayStation, I would mm-hmm. say, um, 
I would have to go back to PlayStation 2 because it has less buttons. Mm-hmm. None of these new controllers have got way too many buttons that feel like X, Y, triangle, circle, square, blah, 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 back, forth, left, right. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's too as many long, buttons. As long as you jumped ahead to that question, I had my thought, too. I'm going Atari 2600. There you go. <laughs> Which question Even was that we're jumping cool. at, Joe? 16. <laughs> 16 Xbox. We can go back, but I, it, it's, but it's a good it. segue into it because we're talking about the two, like a Sega system and a uh-huh. Nintendo system, and those are like the first ones, other than your Atari 2600 type thing. Which was but, a yeah. there's no the rule. Button. There, there's no rule that says we have to follow these questions in order. So yeah, let's do. The, um, so you're saying Atari 2600, the classic. I like that. Um, the only console that I ever played on a regular basis was the Super Nintendo system that. Jason used to have when you guys first moved in together on Burr Street, when Dan and Jason were living together in that apartment. Mm. And he got that Super Nintendo and we were ball playing Final Fantasy 2 for like hours <laughs> on end. That was, I think that was my favorite memory of a console. So if I had to go with that, I would go with, you know, Super Nintendo. So Xbox or PlayStation, I have both in my house. My kids use them. I really don't, you know, yeah, I've got a smart TV that does everything I need. You know, and, so and same it. same thing here. I mean, we have mm-hmm. um, the latest the 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 recent PlayStation we have is a PS2. Hey, so hey, we have a PS2, and I have it for uh, Gauntlet Dark Legacy. That's the primary reason I have it for that. Mm-hmm. But but Tyler has an Xbox One. Riker has the Xbox 360, and then we have the rest of them are pretty much Nintendo products. We have the GameCube, the Wii, the um, Wii U, uh, a Switch, a regular Nintendo system. But yeah, so but we have at least one of every type of system in the house. So, but I prefer Nintendo. You've got the great wall of games. It's like Wade. Wade has like all these freaking game oh, yeah, systems. He's got even, and I thought we had Holy a lot. Holy Moses. He's got a crap ton of uh games and game systems so but like I, we don't even uh use our dvd player anymore we can use the xbox 360 for our dvd player so weird all right uh let's pick another one um none, none of us are really anime folks so i'm going to skip seven we all talk about, you know, what's your favorite anime film or series yeah. and why is unless, it like Star Blazers count? Was Star, but, you know, Star Blazers, you know, Space Battleship Yamato was an anime. For me, it would, would be Avatar go, Last um, Airbender. The one I liked was, is called Escaflone. It was on like. Oh, Escaf- I, yeah, I've heard about that one. I don't think I've ever watched it though. I have them all on DVD. Really? Yes. I'm going to have to borrow that, I think, just so I can check it out. Because I've heard the, about that one before. The, the, it, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's older. Because um, mm-hmm. I think it was on Fox. Or something. Dude. I remember watching it on TV, and then I um, bought the DVDs. All right. So. Dan, do you have a vote on that one? No, not really. I didn't think you were much of an anime guy. No. Now, yeah. if we said, if we asked Sean, he would have. Yeah, if we asked Sean, we'll be here for an hour. And uh, mm-hmm. so that's what we do when we, when we want to do an anime conversation. We'll bring Sean, Ray, and Hunter together, and then just we can all go ahead and log off and have a coffee or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, Hogwarts house. Tanya, what's your Hogwarts house? Uh, my Hogwarts house is Gryffindor. Nice. Did you get the Pottermore test? Did you do I that? I did. That's amazing when you think about it, because I would put you at Ravenclaw because you're nope, very smart I, and thoughtful, right? Yeah, but I, would I put, came up Gryffindor. And I came up Hufflepuff. Which, you know, like here, here, wait a minute, Chris, wait, what? Hufflepuff? Really? I, everybody was predicting me Gryffindor. As a matter of fact, it was funny. While I was taking Pottermore, Ian was behind me chanting Gryffindor, Gryffindor. <laughs> and then it came up Hufflepuff, and he's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, is it, uh, Hufflepuff is uh, Jules, too, right? Yeah, Jules Jules and I are both Hufflepuffs. And then yeah. Ian is Ravenclaw. No, I, I'm a, I'm a Gryffindor. See, I'm, How about you, I'm, Billy? What would you think? See, I think I'm either a Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff. But now I want to take. I haven't seen this Pottermore test. So now I want Pottermore to dot com, me. man. It's a great site for for Potter fans. It's so just a lot of fun. I, I'm going to go Ravenclaw for now until I take okay. the test. Isn't it the Wizarding World now? Wizarding World, the site, not Pottermore. I don't know. It's been. It's been a while uh, since I've been to it. I think mine yeah. was like Potterverse or something like 
Yeah, yeah I, thought the, I thought the official one is now the Wizarding, wizarding World. Can that's where they've been. That's where they've been posting. Also, the um, different uh, cast, you know, different cast members reading different chapters of the book. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that's where the test is and stuff on Wizarding Wizarding World. Wizarding World. Well, I'm gonna have to retake it and see what it says. Maybe I've evolved in the ten years since I took Pottermore the first time. Oh yeah, it is. So the Potter. If you type in Pottermore, .net, it goes to Wizarding World. Okay. Cool. See these. I I, have, I did not know that. So how about you, Dan? We've all chimed in. How about you? Well, the last time I took it, it was Gryffindor. Nice. It blows I don't know me if away. It's changed, but... but here's the, it's it's funny because people who know us from the outside looking in, they they would probably expect me to be the Gryffindor and you to be like the Ravenclaw or the Hufflepuff. And to have him flipped is blowing people's minds. But here's the thing. This is this is this should be genuinely taken into account. There there is of of Dan and I, of this this pair of, of brothers in spirit. There is one guy who's been skydiving. There's one guy who's been bungee jumping. There's one guy who has been scuba diving, and it ain't me. Scuba diving. Oh, you didn't do scuba? I thought you were talking about it. No. Once. All right. But it, but in those other two things, it, it wasn't me. I was scared shitless. I'm not going to go up there. No, nope, jump <laughs> out of a. It's hard enough to get me into an airplane to begin with. You want me to jump out of it? No. Jump out of a perfectly good plane? Yeah. And the bungee jumping thing blew me away. I mean, it was so funny. You didn't even tell me you were going to do it, right? You came over with the videotape of all things. You know, like, oh, I want to show you this videotape. And you pop it into the VCR. And we're watching and I'm like, wait, it, um, wait what are you doing? Oh, oh my God. I would never even think about doing stuff like that. So Dan is the closet adventurer. Okay. If, if Dan ever did a web series on Dan's adventures and like actually went out and started doing things, going hiking and stuff like that. I think that would be huge. That would be an amazing thing. And we're going to talk about that because now I have an idea. Um, hmm. Not just, not right now. We're going to talk about that offline because now I'm having an ideas. But, uh, but it's seriously, I think it's it's funny to, to, to look at somebody and say, oh, they must be a this and then find out otherwise and then realize they actually did earn that otherwise. So Dan being a Gryffindor, I completely buy into that. Completely buy into that. So... Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, question number favorite doctor. Number nine, favorite doctor. For me, that's 12. For me, it's 11. 11 was very good. 11 was Ten. a lot of fun. 10, of course. 10. Billy, Billy? 10. 10? So Ten. we got two votes for 10, one yeah. for 11, one for 12. There we go. That's not bad. Moving on. Yeah. See, that was an easy one. <laughs> wow. I mean, we all talk about, you know, four, <clears throat> you know, Tom Baker and the scarf and everything. That's yeah. a classic. Everybody loves that. And I, you know, absolutely. He's still one of my favorites of all time. Cause he just defined the character. But for me, it's, it's gotta be Peter, you know, and for, for Dan, it's Matt and for everybody else, it's mm -hmm. David, mm -hmm. David made it, you know, David made it a global sensation and then Matt blew it up. I considered Eccleston because he's really underrated. He's what terribly he, underrated. He, he did. He, he didn't stick around long enough. Yeah, yeah I, he was fantastic one, in the part. That's the one negative is that he was only there he, for the year because I really liked him, and that's what made me want to keep watching. So I'm he, looking he forward to the back, fact yeah. he's going to start doing the audio adventures now. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be cool. And, and he stayed away from it for so long after he did it, too, because he just, I don't know, it was it must not have been the right way. time for him and stuff. Yeah. No, I think, mm -hmm. think he just... It wasn't the right time for him, but he did a. I, I, I mean, he brought it back. I mean, he was mm -hmm. kind of the start of the you know, this the, the new generation here of it, and yeah, he did a great job. And I was surprised he was only there for a year, but you know, and that's a thing. Mm -hmm. All right, number ten, Stargate or Babylon Five. I got nothing. You know what? I, you know I those. I've seen uh, both, but yeah, uh -huh. uh, no, I don't. I I would think I would like Babylon Five better than Stargate. I've watched more of Babylon Five. I mean, the Stargate series, the movie, and then all the, the the TV series have been on for longer than Babylon Five, so there's more material to base off of. I think they're both really good. I enjoyed them both. They're but they're good for different reasons. Um, you know, Stargate did the episodic, here's the new planet of the week thing. And then they had the story arcs of dealing with the Goa Uld, and then eventually the Ori and, and so forth. Uh, and the, the, having the Asgard come in and just, there were some like subplots and whatnot that were kind of neat. Um, Babylon 5 had this unerring ability to, to have this completely interwoven story. And while you think you're watching an episodic thing with a kind of an arc in the background, then you realize that it's all tied together. It's so wild. Um, J. Michael Straczynski, who wrote Babylon 5, 
laced all of these little references in, in, in season one. And you just think of them as throwaway references. You think of them as throwaway lines. And then all of a sudden, two or three seasons later, or right towards the, in the climax, all of a sudden it's bam, here's a reference to that thing that happened in, in season one and was actually tied to season three. And oh, here now we're, we're tying it up. And you're just sitting there staring at it going, oh my God, that's genius. And he wrote um, like all of the episodes of Babylon 5, except for two, I think is the, the trivia thing on that. So where Stargate kind of, gave you this great um, evolving canvas of, of, uh, of various mythologies all kind of woven together. Babylon 5 brought storytelling to a whole new level. And, and so I think they're both really good. If I had to pick one, I'd have to go with Stargate just for the, the volume of things to watch um, and some of like the character developments and character interactions and whatnot. But, but Bab 5 was just amazing. Anybody else got any take on that? I have a friend who loved Bab. It's his all-time favorite show is Babylon Five. So, well, I Wayne have, came in when we were that. still in studio, and 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 Wayne came in a couple of years ago, and and with his whole Bab Five collection to talk about it at length, and he had a lot of great points to make about it. You know, so I, I it's yeah, it, it's hard to to choose Stargate and Babylon Five. It's like choosing between chocolate and and um, you know more chocolate. It's, <laughs> it's both really good. You know, it's like some of it's Giardelli and some of it is Cadbury. You know, they're they're both really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to skip number 11 outright because I don't think any of us played the Elder Scrolls video games. No. 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 So if having a favorite Elder Scrolls race is going to be pointless because we have no idea what we're talking about. And red or blue. Those I think are the, the two. Color? The, are they the two pills that you. The two pills in the Matrix. Okay. Red oh, pill or okay. blue pill. That's what, um, that's my my guess. I just can't remember what the red and blue do. That's a good guess. That's what I'm going to base this this on. Then Tanya is 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 uh, is it the pills from the Matrix? Red pill or blue pill? So guys, would you take the pill that would leave you in the Matrix, un, unaware of what was going on around you, or would you take the one that would free you so you could join the fight? Which one's which? Um, red pill reveals an unpleasant truth, or taking the blue pill remains blissful ignorance. So oh, blue is stay. Red blue, is blue is to stay in the matrix, and red is to get out. Get dirty and see what happens. See, yeah, I'm glad real you truth. explained that question to me. I didn't know if they wanted our favorite color or political. That's, that's what I was thinking at first. I'm like, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm going blue. Yeah, you, you take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. <laughs> I, I, can, I take the red. I would do. I blue. No. I want to. I want to know the. I want to know the truth. I want to know what's what's going on. I would. I would do the red. Yep. Yep. I like so to know the you, real truth of things. I don't like to just be blindly told what's 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 happening. Tanya, you said blue. <laughs> At least for right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So two blue. And of course, it would be Dan and I going red. We come get you guys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Moving on. I'm going to circle back around to my, my favorite comic book collector. Uh, Billy, who's your favorite X-Men member? Oh, I'm going to go Nightcrawler. Na, 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 na. Nightcrawler? Yeah, 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 he's an awesome, awesome character. How about you there, Tanya Fabulous? Uh, Rogue. Okay. She's always been my favorite. Mm-hmm. Daniel Sun? I, I don't know. I can't think of one. I can't. I don't know. Come back to me. Okay. Well, you know. There's only one left. That's me. All right. And I'm, I'm going to be picking Beast. Because <laughs> Beast is just badass. He's blue. Well, I think it's just, it's, it's the, the, the dichotomy of the character. You have this thoughtful philosopher, uh, scientist who just wants to create a better world around him. But the exterior shell is this, this badass you know, monster of sorts, right? Who just bounds around the, and he's a big, big fella. So the fact that he can bound around the, the battlefield with such speed and agility, it's, it's, there's so many incongruities about the character. And I just love that. And, and I'm so used to the big, bad, you know, 
weird ass looking monster being, uh, you know, smash, uh, you know, kill this thing. Oh, tear. But he's like, oh, you know, and as Keats once said, and or in Shakespeare, oh, you know what I meant? You know, that it's and the fact that in the movies he got to be played by Kelsey Grammer mm-hmm. just made it so much better <laughs> for me. I was like, oh my God, that's perfect casting. So yeah, that's uh, Beast is my guy, Rogue. So Beast, Rogue, and Nightcrawler, which is a good team right there, I got to tell you. So back to Dan. Back to Dan. I knew uh, you were going to have that much of a. Of a yeah. Thing. I guess I'll go with Professor X there, Professor. All right, that's not bad. That's a good mm-hmm. try. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, it's a good pick. The 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 boss in the middle. Mm-hmm. All right. Why don't we in. do a couple like like two Let's more? Let's do a couple more. Yeah, we'll do yeah, more. It's... And we um, can definitely save the list for another day. I I want to jump to um, number nineteen specifically for Dan. Okay, and then and then I have a question for Billy. Okay. All right. So we'll do nineteen favorite Disney animation film. Damn. Aladdin. Aladdin's always been your favorite of all of them, huh? Yeah. That's cool. Is it Robin Williams? Yep. That's the man. Uh, yeah. How about you there, Tan? Um, Aladdin's up there, uh, but I'm going to have to go uh, Beauty and the Beast. Okay. Mm. All right. Very cool. Billy? Good one, too. Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Peter very Pan. good, yeah, because we are the, the, the children who never grew up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's Mulan. Mm. Okay. I've always liked Mulan of the Disney movies. So, all right, uh, Billy, um, you know number eighteen's coming your way. Let's see. Let me look at number eighteen. Music supergroup. Oh, see, I I've been thinking about that, and in general, supergroups can be problematic because you get different styles that don't necessarily uh-huh. blend together. Now, if I had well, to you don't my... have to think too hard about it, but. Yeah. <laughs> That, but I, my favorite sing, I think the greatest voice of all time is Jackie Wilson, an old soul mm-hmm. singer from the 60s. Mm-hmm. Greatest guitar, my favorite guitar player is Prince. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Bass player, John Entwistle from The Who. Cool. And drummer, Levon Helm, uh, Helm from the band. Not bad. I don't know if they'd make a good band together, but. Uh-huh. Hey, if they're any good, they should be able to play together. Yeah, they yeah. Can, they can, I'm sure they could. I'm sure they could riff. Yeah. So I'm. I'm going to go with that group of folks. And I think maybe now that I mention it, maybe they will play together. Jackie Wilson's yeah. very soulful. Levon Helms is a soulful drummer. Prince is obviously soulful. John Whistle may be the problem, but I don't think so. He can. <laughs> no, I think John, John's adaptable. Yeah. So. And, and Prince, I, I, you know what? I didn't truly appreciate what a musician he was until later in his life when I realized mm-hmm. what a guitar player he really was. Holy Moses, that man could shred a guitar. Yeah. It was I, amazing. He really, the, 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 the talent he had. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. the uh, clip of him playing While My Guitar Gently Weeps at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with mm-hmm. yes! that group, I, I think really sort of drew that out to people that hadn't seen him do that before. Or right. the Super Bowl halftime show, you know, a few years after that. But mm-hmm. he is an amazing guitar player. And in that While My Guitar Gently Weeps clip, my favorite part is at the end where he just throws the guitar in the air and you never see it come down. Yeah. <laughs> he just kind of threw it up over his back. He threw yeah. it up, like, just, just threw it behind him just and then walked away. I'm yeah. like, oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a down. mic drop. So. Guitar drop, yeah, yeah, oh, that's boy. amazing. Um, Tanya, I can't do this one. I she mean, can't I, do this one. Fleetwood Mac. I and, and you know, drummer Mick Fleetwood, guitarist uh-huh. uh, um, Lindsey Buckingham. Yeah, I'm like, I have <laughs> yeah. to go because I can't. She's necessarily, loyal to her favorites. I am loyal to my favorites. I can't necessarily go to other groups because I don't really pay attention to who their um, members are. I was thinking about you last night. As a matter of fact, I had um, YouTube cycling through videos and there is a, an up and coming kind of um, an up and coming band. I don't know how long they've been around probably a couple of years now, but they're called Delta Ray. And I love the sound of them. And, and the, they've got these two female lead singers and the core of them are these three siblings. One of them is the singer and then the guitar, uh, one of the guitar players and the keyboards are the siblings. And they're kind of like Southern bluesy rock folk together. And they've got some great music. Um, but they did a live rendition of The Chain. And mm. they did it in four-part harmony, just like, you know, like Fleetwood Mac did. And it sounded amazing. I'm going to find that and I'm going to send you the link for it because okay. it was so good. Um 
Dan, how about you? Do you have a super group in mind that doesn't involve Debbie Gibson? No. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, Freddie Mercury is the vocals. Okay. Eddie Van Halen, guitar. Nice. Um, what's the one's name from Def Leppard? The drummer from Def Leppard. Oh, Rick Allen. Oh, Rick Allen. Yes. Yes. Thank the you. The one-armed drummer. Um, yeah. Um, and I don't. I can't think of bass right now. But I got those three anyway. I can't think of a, a bassist right now, but. Okay. So you get a three piece super group like Cream was. Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, there's lots of good bass players. Even yeah. some yeah. session guys can yeah. jump in there and, and drop the, uh, the rhythm line in the back. Now, when I was reading this and thinking about it, I, again, last night I was cycling through, you know, music videos on YouTube and whatnot. I may have had a couple of glasses of wine and I was just relaxing and just you know, trying to wind down after the day. So my super group would be take the remnants of the Grateful Dead with John Mayer, okay. mesh them with Dave Matthews Band, and throw Stevie Wonder in on keyboards. Huh. Oh, excuse me. And, wow. and the reason I thought about that is because there is a um, there is a video out there where Stevie sat in with Dave Matthews Band during a concert when he was home in Atlanta a couple of years ago, and hmm. they had such a freaking blast doing Superstition, um, hmm. and and it was just so wonderful to listen to. And I'm like, okay, cool. So let's mesh this all together, and then we can just put our feet up, and this is going to be fun. Stevie's a performer. I mean, Stevie uh, is I, I, he's a consummate performer. I, I've seen him live a couple of times at one of the conventions I was at the. Uh-huh. Um, and I was like, wow, yeah, he was, he's, he puts on a show. Listen, he does. In, until you added Stevie Wonder, I thought you were just going for the world's longest song. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then guest, guest vocalist, Janis Joplin. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. That would be, that would be my, my icing on the cake there for that one. But yeah, that's that. I think that would be a, just an absolutely great freaking time listening to that band play. So, just be it just be fun to listen to some some really good artists. It's all together. Just have fun. Mm-hmm. You know, just not leave their egos at the door and just go out and just have fun. I mean, where, some of these people, are, some of these people are just so talented out there. But you know, there's some of them just such egos, and if they can just leave it all at the door and just go out and just you know, the, the ones who can do that are are, are, pro- are the most amazing ones. Well, I think my favorite of the actual quote unquote super groups would probably be the Traveling Wilburys. Yeah. Okay. That's a great. You know, when you. George Harrison, Tom Petty, Bob Dylan. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't think of the guy from ELO. Jeff Lynn. Bad. Jeff Lynn, thank you. And you know. Roy Orbison. And Roy Orbison. I mean, come yeah. on. That's that's like that's rock and roll legend right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're just a bunch of guys just jamming and having a good old time. Having have fun. It's what it's about, you know. Yep. That is it. That is it yeah. right there. That's <sighs> all right. So that's cool. That's that's fun for a conversation. We didn't hit all the questions. We had half of them. You yeah, but, but that's not a problem. No. Like, no problem. I'm, I'm just going to pick one uh, mm-hmm. because my favorite Marvel villain, Galactus. <laughs> it's, not not cloud. Cloud. it's not a cloud. It's not the real Galactus, and I'm saying that's why that annoys me so much is because he really is my favorite villain, and they turned him into a cloud. So, I and just and, and we're mention that, and we're going to go to break. But before we do, I'm going to say that my favorite member of the Umbrella Academy is Klaus. <laughs> and we'll talk about Umbrella Academy further some other day, but because I have not watched season two yet. But yes, I'm just that's saying. gotta be a like a, a, a podcast. Yeah, that's gotta Umbrella be a podcast Academy. because it's such a good show. show. It is, yeah. All right, so let's take a quick break and we come back. We're gonna have a question of the week. are back ladies and gentlemen boys and girls dudes and dudettes fc three pulls all and together um wow that so, sounded so thoughtful wasn't it nice that was light that was very light and philosophical and ah. pretty. <laughs> ah. well it's always fun after a very energetic you know discussion to kind of like just make it nice and easy so um so th- with that being said i mean really the only event we have april 2021 fc 36 the search for fc 35 Yes. There you go. Right. And uh, that's a total. If you find it, let us know. If you find (laughs) FC35, let us know. It wandered (laughs) off when we weren't looking. During during the pandemic, it's like, okay, screw you people. I'm going to go find something to do. And we lost track of it. It wandered in September and then it wandered (laughs) again. And then it it, it got lost. It definitely got lost in the way. 
it's so. it's like it's like Babylon Five. It's the last of the Babylon stations. All right. So what happened to the other four? They have an episode that, that there's a couple of episodes they talk about what happened to the previous four Babylon stations, and one of them just disappeared. It just poof, mm. it didn't blow up. It didn't disintegrate. It just poof, disappeared. So, <laughs> so we're cool. saying that's yeah. So that's what happened. To D, you know, FC three five. It just poofed. So it's become the it, it, triangle it, it, of conventions. It, it, so is that our official name now? I'm going to call it FC three six. The search for FC three five. Yes. I don't. I don't think it has to be the official <laughs> name, but I'm going to say it every so often just because it amuses the crap out of me. Because it's fun. You know, we got to have fun, right? This is all about having fun, right? FC three is about having fun. So and Dan's yeah. excited. So yes. Okay, yes, so we'll go right. with that. Like we'll it. make that the official subtitle, FC you know, 36. We started off with FC 2020, you know, we see clearly or something like that. But yeah. <laughs> but we never saw it coming. No, we never saw it happen to you. But we never saw it going. I don't know. Oh. Um, but anyway, with that being said. We're you know, not doing a question event. of the week this week, are we? Um, you know, we did a lot of questions just now, but let me just ask. We'll, we'll wrap up the show like this. What do you got? What's been keeping you happy these days? We haven't done what's making your heart happy these days. Um, but is there a project you're working on or is there something you're looking forward to doing this particular week? Like Dan's going on vacation. Is there something particular you're going to do while you're up in the Thousand Islands for a week? I don't know what. And we're going on, going on the boat tour. Yeah, relax a little bit. Mm-hmm. Spend time with the kids. Um, other stuff to keep me happy, funny. I took out, you know, I, I mentioned it once before, I took up disc golf. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've been, we've been playing every week with a bunch of guys from work. And it's just, you know, I'm not good by any means, but it's a, it's a nice, it's been, you know, I've been learning more about it, learning all the different, just different discs, just like, just like regular golf, there's different discs. Who knew? You know, there's different attributes of, of different discs and this and that. So it's been, it's been kind of keeping me going through this. I've been looking forward to it every, you know, every Wednesday we've been playing. So that's cool. Nice. So it's been something, you know, something unexpected during the pandemic here. So. That is cool. You picked up a new hobby. That's awesome. I love yeah, it. Yeah, disc golf. And uh, Billy? Yes. I uh, Well, I already talked about my bagging and boarding of comics, but I just right. uh, I restarted my favorite book. Um, it's a book called Ball Four. It's one of the sp- classics in sports. It's considered the best baseball book ever by many people. A uh, pitcher by the name of Jim Bouton. Uh, kept a diary of his 1969 uh, season with an expansion team called the Seattle Pilots. And it's very funny, very smart, and it's a book I've always loved. And a new biography of Jim Bouton was just put out a couple months ago. So before reading that, I thought I'd revisit all four. Hmm. Not bad. You know what? I think I remember you mentioning that book before in the past. So, yes, Mm -hmm. I do remember that. Um, Tanya. Are you still on vacation? I am still on vacation, um, but I am doing a little bit of work stuff sometime this week. I'm, uh, uh, we have to kind of figure out um, schedules and some logistics before we go back. Um, I go back September 3rd um, and then I'm back on the 8th. Um, Mm -hmm. So I work the 3rd, the 8th, um, but I've got um, appointments this week. I have a dentist appointment and, uh, then Rikers got orientation for middle school on the same day. So my Wednesday's pretty busy. Um, I'm thinking I'm possibly going shopping with my mom sometime this week. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, the only thing that's on my agenda other than um, the book club uh, Wednesday night is I have a bag of runaway comics, uh, comics for runaways. That I've got to dive into, so I'm planning on doing that. The TV show, The Runaways. Yeah, it's based on. Yeah. Okay. So it's the comics um, that the for that. TV show is based on. Yep. Cool. Um, and Tyler starts school this week, so I'm gonna kind of dive in and help him there with his uh, courses. He's taking mm-hmm. astronomy and criminology and mythology and U.S. history. So. Hmm. Yep, this is his last semester. Oh boy! Let, let me rephrase go. it. This is our last semester. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna have an associate's degree in uh, liberal arts. Oh wait, I already have a liberal arts degree. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bachelor's degree. Uh, but yes. So there's that, and uh, but other than that, not much. Uh, I'm gaming, hanging out with friends. Yeah. That type of stuff. So. Uh, and you, you Christopher? Um, I rediscovered 
the the joys of home ownership, and I don't say that sarcastically. I've I've gone on a, a, with uh, with other people's help recently. You know, we've talked about your dad coming over to help with the that fallen tree in the backyard stuff like that. But just having a renewed interest in being able to you know, like big projects, you know, tearing out shrubbery and getting ready to plant. Uh, you know, I'm going to build a flower box over the winter and then install it in front of the house. Stuff like that. I'm like excited to do stupid like Martha Stewart, you know, you know, victory garden level stuff in my at, at my property. And it's just it's it's the fun part of being a home, homeowner is putting your touch on the place you live, you know, and, and um, I've been kind of weaning myself off of my Minecraft addiction lately. So that's kind of cool. I can actually do it in real world, you know, that way, you know, and, and <laughs> so that's, that's kind of a thing that I've been, I've been tinkering around with. So hmm. yeah, it'll be fun. And that's it. That's a show right there. And that's it. And we hope you guys have, uh, have a lot of fun. Uh, Dan, have a safe, safe trip. All right. Thank we want you. to see you uh, Helen, Hale and Hardy when you come home and uh, tanned, rested, and ready, as it were. I don't get tanned, but I'll be hopefully rested and ready. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tanya, I'll see you tomorrow for uh, Nerd World News. Yep. We may have a surprise guest star for Nerd World Ooh. News. Since this is being broadcast on Wednesday, it'll be after the fact that you'll probably have seen a Sybil. <gasps> Ooh, Sybil. Monday. She's come to. She's going to be coming into town uh, and wants to Sybil. So My Kindle started fun. talking to me. I don't know if you picked that up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I was like, what I was that? That was I'm my Kindle. Yelled, I'm sorry. That's all right. But that's a wrap That's the end of the show. And now we are going to go say, hey, Dan. Hey, Chris. Hey, Dan. Hey, Chris. Hit it. Because this has been FC3's Monkey Business, a product of the Mighty Monkey Corporation, purveyors and producers of the Flower City Comic Con, coming at you April 24th and 25th of 2021 at the Total Sports Experience in Gates. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, follow us wherever we go, and we'll lead you to where the entertainment is. You guys have a great week, have a safe week, and we'll talk to you again next week. Dun, dun, dun. dun. <laughs> suffer from shyness? Do you sometimes wish you were more assertive? Ask your doctor or pharmacist about tequila. Tequila? I could use some tequila. (laughs) (laughs) See, we need new theme music now. Isn't that From Rochester, New York. Let's do that again. (laughs) (laughs) Have any of you been drinking tequila already? Uh, Not since a few days ago. That you can prove. Yes, there we go. (laughs) <laughs> All right, take two. Oh my god, that was fun. I was like, wait a minute, why is Dan talking? <laughs> but that's perfect. Yeah, it worked. It worked. It just threw me off. That's the that was the only problem. All right, now I'm ready for it. Now I'm ready for it. So you can do it again. Now I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Three, two. Do you suffer from shyness? Do you sometimes wish you were more assertive? Oh crap on a stick. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Oh, we're going to have a great bloopers reel. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading the meme, and it's like on the far right side of my screen, and it's on Facebook, right? So as I'm halfway through, all of a sudden, an instant message comes through and blocks the damn meme. <laughs> <laughs> like, son of a bitch. I'm like, come on. <clears throat> I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm on it. I mean it. Third time's the charm. Third, third take Bartlett's what they call me. All right. Three, two, one. <laughs> I can't do it now. Do you suffer yeah. from dryness? Do you wish you were more assertive? Do you, do you suffer from dryness? Anyway. Do, you wish you could, do you wish you could read off a script? I wish. <laughs> <laughs>
do you wish you could? It's, I'm putting that in now. Okay, here we go. This is, I mean it. I mean it. Do, I, do, I, do you want me to say something in or not? Yeah, go ahead. Because <laughs> okay. now I'm expecting it. <sighs> I was almost there. I swear to God, I was almost there. I don't Take even six. Take seven. <laughs> Take six. Six. Ah! <laughs>